All right, controllers. We got a keyboard, an arcade stick. These are USB controllers back here and some original hardware controllers. Notice I don't have any wireless controllers because I don't use them because they add input lag. And like I said in my earlier hardware video, it's all about finding ways to limit input lag. Anywhere I can trim it out, I'm cutting it out. So no wireless controllers. So original hardware controllers. Here we have the original NES controller right here. These controllers get tired after a while, original controllers. So I was playing Alien Soldier, a difficult game with demanding button inputs, and I got stuck, like I couldn't do the inputs. And I switched to a newer controller that was also original hardware, and all of a sudden I could put in the inputs. So that uh, other controller I was using that I couldn't do the inputs on happened to be my favorite controller. It was a red button Sega controller. And I just like how it looks. Um, so I took it apart and cleaned it, put it back together, and it still didn't function well. Well, what happens is over time, the buttons just get tired on them. Uh, so this one I've, I've bought aftermarket buttons and put them in and it has this curved D-pad and oh my God, it just works so much better. You don't realize how tired your controller is until you find one that's new and just snappy the buttons are. Like they have tension to them, they respond better. A curved D-pad is just superior. Um, so when I first got this Hori Fighting Commander, I noticed it had a curved D-pad and I didn't like it because I wasn't used to it. But dudes, your thumb is curved and it just hugs your finger when you're doing fighting inputs it just the curve works better so yeah I mean with original hardware you're gonna have to update your controllers I would say if you're going original hardware just get all new internals from a, a reputable seller seller and replace all the stuff in them uh, for USB controllers uh, don't cheap out I bought one of these eye buffaloes which I heard was good and it, it's just a step up from crap in my opinion it's not crap, but it's pretty damn close. Like this, these buttons just don't work quite right, the R and L buttons. And I've had two of these, and I mean, they're not, like I said, they're not crap, but they're pretty damn close. Just go get one of these if you're doing USB pad controller. Hori Fighting Commander, the cord is extra long. It's just, I, this is my favorite pad. If I could just plug this into everything, I would just use it for everything as far as, as, far as pad play. It's, it's new, so all everything's responsive. It's just very well made. Curve buttons, six button layout. You can change, you know, what your R and Ls and everything do up here, which is good for fighting games. This is the way to go. Now, if you're going to get into fighting games or shooters, you probably need to just bite the bullet and train yourself to use an arcade stick. So, arcade sticks, man, like. I'm no expert and it is its own can of worms. But so for fighting games, let's see if I can get in here. There's times like on Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, you need to plank the buttons. So like you can do a combo by initiating like a kick and then if you can do a series of motions and time it so that you'll cancel your kick into like a super move that does high damage. So you're, you're doing things where you're hitting like three buttons at once or you'll do it, you'll hit six buttons at once, like pianoing or double tapping. And you just can't do that with the pad. I mean, when you play with the pad, you're playing with just your thumbs. So basically what I'm trying to say, and not explaining it very well, is you can do things very quickly because you're playing with all your fingers with these buttons that you cannot do with this. And I've heard people say like, Oh, the pad's just as good as an arcade stick. It's really just preference. And I bought into that until I got serious into gaming, and it's just not true. At least not for difficult old fighting games where there's not a lot of leeway. It doesn't have a lot of leeway in your button um, inputs. They need to be precise. So yeah, you just can't do things on here. You can get on the pad. You can get much more precise movements on here. Um, what else to say about that? So, 
Another thing I noticed, okay, I was playing Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo and I wanted to do this difficult thing called an option select with Ken. And I had to do, and I was playing with the pad and I had to do very precise button inputs. And I just couldn't pull it off. So I ended up like mapping all of my buttons in this exotic way so that I could do it. And I could actually do it. But then I was playing the game and it was disgusting how I had to hold the controller and play. And I'm like, this is gross. So then I started playing on the arcade stick and I can pull off the option selects on here and it just feels better. And I noticed playing on the pad just feels gross in general. Like, like gameplay and practicality aside, just it feels better to play on an arcade stick. Like when you're playing like this, it's like just your thumbs. You're just like kind of sitting there. Reminds me in skateboarding when I see someone on a scooter, I'm like, why don't you just get a skateboard, dude? Like that scooter, that's not looking like stylistically or fun wise, like, like what a skateboard does. And it's the same on here, like something about it. Like you're just doing these big movements with your arms, like your whole arm and upper body comes into play. Your whole hand is playing this instead of just your thumbs. This is it, it's just your thumbs. But with a stick, you have to do movements and your whole kind of arm works and it just you feel more engaged and it's just more fun. And the say the way I would say to get into arcade stick is to go play a beat em up. Uh, if you go from playing a pad to a, a fight stick on a beat em up, you're gonna be just as good with the arcade stick on the beat em up. You won't be better, but you'll still be playing just fine. But if you go from pad to arcade stick on a fighting game you're gonna suck you will not be able to go from here to here if you have no experience with this it's gonna take you a month of training so the way I've trained myself to use the stick is every day I practice for like five or ten minutes and I just do um, I just do uh, Hadoukens, Shoryukens, I do you know command inputs over and over again in both directions until I can do ten in a row it takes me like five minutes I don't know and I'm done and I did that for a month and then I was just as good on the arcade stick as the pad. And I found that was a more useful way to train rather than um, just doing like three hours once a week or something. Like your arm's gonna get exhausted, you're gonna start failing, but if you just do a little bit every day, even five or 10 minutes, you can train yourself pretty quickly. And you just, you really do need to train. Like the, just the Shoryuken movement it's just something that your neural pathways and just your dexterity is gonna to have to learn. It'd be like trying to throw a baseball with your non-dominant hand. It's gonna take a while. That's how it feels at first when you move to the arcade stick. But after you practice for a while, it's gonna feel just as natural as throwing with your dominant hand. Uh, real quick, I'll just mention keyboards. I have played on a keyboard. I used to have a job where I could play at work and I would play Street Fighter on here. And you can get really good at using the button inputs on a keyboard to play. I will say it doesn't have the style and it is kind of gross, kind of like the pad. So I just, I don't recommend it from a fun factor point of view. So arcade sticks are customizable and you really do need to customize them based on what you're doing. Uh, there's different levers with different tops. This is a ball top, this is a bat top. The length right here, the throw is longer on some than others and that will change like how quickly it responds. If it has a short lever, it's gonna respond quickly, whereas a longer one takes longer to move till it um, actually engages one of the switches in here. Uh, different levers have different gates on them. This one is a, uh, basically doesn't have a gate. This is a, the gate is where the, the stick moves around in. And, like this one is just rounded. Like you can see in here, it's just round. So the stick moves freely. This is a Korean lever versus this one is square. So it sticks in the corners. And you know, if you're playing Zangief, you don't like when it sticks in the corners on Street Fighter, but basically everyone else, it's nice to stick in the corner and you can lock in there. Shooters, I like having uh, a very soft lever and I like having the Korean lever with free movement. And by soft, like there's a spring in here. And when it's really stiff, this, some of them have grommets and you can get different strengths of grommets, different strengths of springs. And if it's really stiff, it's like, it's 
harder to make movements quickly versus if it's soft, you can actuate it really quickly. Uh, yeah, I mean, these things are just so customizable. I kind of feel like if you get into them, you probably should just buy a couple of different things, like buy a ball, ball top, a bat top, different lengths of levers, um, get a, I know they make sticks that will let you change the gate, like from square to octagonal. Octagonal isn't a word, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Octagonal. <laughs> I made up a word. But yeah, you probably should get into it figuring you're going to have to change. Whatever setup you get, just know that you probably, that's not what you're going to stick with. And you probably should experiment with some different setups. But yeah, that's going to wrap up the hardware video, guys. Go out there and beat some hard games for me.